Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is John Campia, and this is part two of our WandaVision Episode 8 open spoiler discussion. Now, of course, we did part one of the WandaVision Episode 8 open spoiler discussion on Friday, the, the day that the show came out, but we still had a lot to go. So right now we're going to get to part two. Now, there's going to be a part three. There are still going to be some questions left over from the live episode that I don't get to right now, but part three will be coming tomorrow and Robert Meyer Burnett will be doing part three. Uh, so we're going to do part two right now. Now, before we get into picking up with the questions, comments, observations, and theories that you guys sent in the other day, uh, I want to say this. A lot of you guys I noticed were sending in messages because of course, Friday, yesterday uh, was my birthday. And I noticed a lot of you guys were sending in birthday wishes. So just let me say right now up front. Uh, a very heartfelt thank you to all of your birthday wishes. I appreciate every single one of them, especially since some of you guys just sent in uh, a, a tip super chat just to say happy birthday. So let me just say that right off top. Thank you to all of you guys who did that. It, you made me feel very, very special. So thank you so much for that. All right, guys, with that said, let's get into it and start getting caught up on the questions that came in the other day. And we're going to get things started here with Lorenzo Jones, who writes, howdy, John. Welp, you called it flashback episode, and if I do say so myself, it was rather great. Answered a lot of questions, old and new, uh, uh, like why Wanda wanted to go with sitcoms. Super cool, in my opinion. And yeah, absolutely. Um, we had been saying, I've been saying since like I think episode five or six, that probably episode eight will be a flashback episode. I thought it might be an entire, like the whole thing would be flashback, but this jump back and forth with Wanda and Agnes into flashback, stuff like that, really cool, answered a lot, and yes, we said right from the beginning, the whole sitcom thing will be the fact that she as a child was watching old American sitcoms in Sokovia growing up, a lot of us said that, and sure enough, we were all right, so there you go. All right, Lorenzo Jones also writes, also. Just want to say big fan uh, of the show. Honestly, thanks, brother. Now take my damn money. Well, thank you so much, Lorenzo. Not only for watching, but thank you also for, for uh, stepping up and supporting the show as well. I really appreciate that, man, very, very much. All right, next up, uh, NR99 writes. Uh, okay, so that rules out Brian Cranston, a character in the MCU. No, not necessarily. No. I mean, listen, we've seen the MCU use an actor in two different roles. In the MCU, as a matter of fact, we about, we're about to have Gemma Chan, who is, of course, in Captain Marvel, and now she's going to be in Internals as a completely different character. So I don't think this rules out uh, Brian Cranston at all, as a matter of fact. Keep the hope alive, man. Uh, David Pace Magic writes, How Agatha drained the witches in Salem is similar to the kid in Yo! Magic ad. Yeah, kind of. Also, my wife wasn't into the MCU until this show, and now she wants to go back. And that is the brilliance right there of Kevin Feige. He makes all of his MCU stuff so that if you're a first time person, you can jump in at any time. You won't feel lost and it'll spark in you an interest to want to go back and watch the previous MCU stuff. That is what's made the MCU so enduringly great for a decade and with all that success. And yes, I agree with you, man. I think it's pretty clear. Agatha is the shark. Agatha's the shark in the Yo! Magic ad. I think that's settled now. Maybe not, but that's kind of what I think too. All right, next up. We've got uh, Brad Canfield writes, happy birthday, John. Thank you so much. You share your birthday with my girlfriend, Megan. Well, happy birthday to you, Megan, as well. Man, I love this episode, but needed more. With only one show left, how can they possibly wrap this up in 35 minutes in Feige We Trust? Well, I believe, I said before, my guess is this will be probably around a 50-minute, 5-0, 45 to 50-minute episode. Um, and listen, they can wrap up a lot in that time. Now they do have a lot to accomplish. They need to settle three main, um, conflicts, right? They need to settle the conflict with sword, the conflict with Agatha and the conflict now with white vision. So there's all that plus some more reveals, but yeah, you can do it. You can do it. It's not going to take a terrible amount of time, but I think in one, you know, 50 minute episode, I think the ability to do it, but, uh, Man, when it ends, I know we're just going to want more. So that's a good problem to have, though. All right, Taki75 writes, all it takes is one bad day. Yes, we saw it with Superman in uh, Injustice Gods Among Us. Of course, the, the Joker line. And really, I mean, with Wanda, it's not one bad day, man. It's been a bad lifetime. She's had a lifetime of tragedy. Uh, RJ Technovine writes, 
Hey, John and Anne's not here. I seriously flip out. I'll seriously flip out if White Vision is voiced by James Spader. Also, I feel that these two visions will either merge or die. I think they're both going to die. I don't think they're going to merge. Now, the reason I don't think they're going to merge is, of course, in Spider-Man Far From Home, when Vision is referenced, he's referenced as deceased. They, they, it kind of in the Spider-Man Far From Home world, which takes place seven months after um, WandaVision, they seem to say he's deceased. So I, I think you're right. I think they're both going to die. I think they are both going to die. And I don't think James Spader will voice White Ultron or, or White uh, Vision. But there's a chance, and I will be like you, RJ. I will flip out if he does. All right, Mark Blazer writes, man, that sad music score really got to me. Everything about the emotional elements of that episode, Mark, totally got to me too. John Argo Rodriguez writes, happy birthday, John. Thank you so much. Hope you have a great day and crush your enemies to see them driven before you and to hear the lamentations of their women. Of course, the great line from Conan the Barbarian, Conan, what is best in life? Uh, and I had a great birthday, man. I really did. I mean, COVID stuff notwithstanding, it limited a little bit to what the stuff that Ann and I could go out and do, but we had a very good time. So thank you for the well wishes, man. All right. R. Henry 1980 writes, do you think WandaVision and Hawkeye shows will set up Young Avengers? The twins could die and come back in Doctor Strange 2, uh, uh, Multiverse of Madness. Do you think it's likely? I don't think it's likely. Uh, I know a lot of people have been thinking about, because, you know, in Hawkeye, he's got the, the young girl with him there, too. So personally, I don't think they're trying to set up Young Avengers. That said, they did Guardians of the Galaxy. And they're doing Eternals. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's an impossibility. No way. But if I had to bet five bucks on it, I'm guessing no. I'm guessing no. But we'll see, man. They very well could. Uh, Peter Vincent writes, uh, Scarlet Witch in full battle costume, please. I think it's coming. I, I think you're going to get your wish, Peter. I think that's coming. John Argot Rodriguez writes, one of two. I've had a theory that's very unlikely that involves the finale setting up Spider-Man 3. Towards the end, Wanda fights Doctor Strange and rips through the multiverse and accidentally brings Electro because in Amazing Spider-Man 2, he's overcharged and obliterated. What if Wanda accidentally brings him into the MCU? Electro's confused about where he is, but recognizes Spidey and goes after him. Nah, I don't think so. And again, we can't emphasize enough that in Spider-Man Far From Home, a movie that takes place seven months after the events of WandaVision, there is no reference of multiverse ripping, of a, a Electro, a new supervillain being back on the scene, of all that kind of stuff. So again, it's, it's possible, but I, I think that renders it unlikely. He goes on to say, there's plot holes like Far From Home set up eight months after WandaVision. He was just saying, unless there's a time jump, and assuming Doctor Strange is in it, but it could be Agatha, uh, that's my unlikely theory. The other, the other issue I would have with that, John, and, and it's possible, the other issue I have with that, though, would be the sense of absolute randomness to suddenly now, okay, if Dr. Strange shows up, now you got four conflicts with Wanda, with Sword, with Agatha, with White Vision, and with Dr. Strange, and you're ripping open the multiverse, and you're bringing in Jamie Foxx's Electro, when none of this show has ever had anything to do with that, it would feel outrageously random. And if there's one thing they don't tend to do with these MCU things is just make absolute, completely confounding randomness happen without rhyme or reason. So again, I'm not going to sit here and say I think it's impossible. I'm just going to sit here and say I think it's probably unlikely. But we'll see, John. We'll see. All right. Zam Master Artwork writes, uh, I just had a thought. If Wanda didn't take Vision's body from S.W.O.R.D. as she created West Vision and she created Westview Vision almost as an extension of herself, how is Hayward tracking him in the hex if he has the body still? My theory on that, Zam, because other people were bringing this up, my theory is this. Inside the hex, things are as real as real can be. That, you know, 2015 car turned into a 1950s car in the hex, that is as real as real gets. And I think in the hex, when she recreated Vision with his indestructible head, I think in the hex, he's made of vibranium. Outside the hex, he doesn't exist. He goes outside the hex, his body flakes apart like a fragile pastry and flies back in. So I think they can track him because inside the hex, He's as vibranium as the vision body is outside the, the hex. 
Now, they haven't confirmed that in the show. That's just me theorizing, but that's a theory that to me kind of makes sense. So that's my guess, Sam. That's my guess. All right. Richard K. writes, when Wonder was in that room and she, you probably meant Wanda, was in that room and she looked into the stone and saw that figure floating on fire and light could be Dark Phoenix. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not Dark Phoenix. Actually, somebody took a screenshot and adjusted the um, uh, adjusted the contrast of it and it actually is Wanda. I thought maybe it could be like a previous Scarlet Witch because remember Agatha's mom in that scene in Salem in the 1600s, she develops that energy crown that looks like Scarlet Witch's headdress too. And I thought maybe that's a previous Scarlet Witch, but no, somebody blew it, blew it up, changed the contrast of it. And you can see it's actually Wanda in it. So yeah, no, that again, the dark Phoenix thing would be a total rando thing to do. That would be a random out of nowhere kind of thing. And that's the kind of thing they tend to avoid, but it is, it was a, a Scarlet witch having a vision of herself, uh, in her, I guess, true form. All right. The great Bondi writes one of four happy birthday, John. Thank you so much. I know it sounds weird, but after this episode, I don't see a clear villain. You have Wanda, uh, that her pain and grief made her create a reality that's that a lot of people that hold a lot of people prisoners. You have Agnes, a powerful manipulative witch that yes, killed Sparky or Sparky might not have been real and is shady and looking for answers the wrong way. And you have Hayward, a shady liar, manipulative person, uh, that recreated vision, but I don't see that different to what Stark did with Ultron or, oh, that's actually a good point or all the lies from Nick Fury. So are, are they all villains? On the other hand, the only heroes I see are Team Monica and Vision trying to do the right thing the right way. And I think, Bondi, what you're bringing up here goes back to the very beginning of the show. You know, a lot of, a lot of us at the beginning really felt like the big baddie, ultimately the bad guy, whether we like it or not, is Wanda. But we know Wanda's not evil, true, but you can not be an evil person and do evil things. And... Wanda has done very evil things. Like, I, w I was saying this on part one of the show, but it, it's worth repeating here. A lot of people like to point to Hayward and all of his shadiness, how bad he is. But I contend, and I, by the way, I love your Tony Stark comparison. That is actually a great comparison. How is that any different? How is what Hayward's doing any different from what Tony Stark did? But let's put that aside for a second. If you put up the actions of director Haywood in this show to the actions of Wanda Maximoff in this show, the clear villain is Wanda Maximoff. Yeah. Hayward acts like a dick. Yeah. He said to Mon he brought up Monica's mom. That was a low shot. Yeah. He lied about, you know, Wanda taking Vision's body when really he was trying to get his body back and online himself. Yeah, he did all that. He's a dick. Wanda took an entire town of people as hostages, basically. She took a town of people against their will and hijacked their lives and took their lives from them. And have forced them to be marionette puppets in her own little fantasy to make her feel better. Now, I know we know Wanda, so we empathize with her, her pain, her tragedy, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, you compare Hayward's actions with Wanda's actions, there's no comparison. If you had to say one of them was evil, and I don't think either of them are evil, but if you had to say one of them is evil, there's no comparison. Wanda is the villain. Wanda's the one who has done things way beyond. She is the one. And like you see, like um, uh, uh, Vision's co-worker, he's in pain. He, Vision sees that one woman kind of doing this in the Halloween episode and tears coming out of her eyes. Like Wanda has hijacked the lives of an entire towns of people, keeping them against their will and using them as marionette puppets for her own benefit. Yeah, but Hayward act like a dick. Yeah, but I'm sorry. You can't compare the actions of Wanda and Hayward. Hayward's clearly the good guy in that scenario. So, but we'll see how it all works out. We'll see how it all works out. And I, again, I love your Tony Stark comparison. All right, Jason A writes, 
You were right about vision. We may never hear the end of it. Uh, it'll be a letdown if the ad people are just townies or if that is on us for hyping them up. Yeah, see, the ad people, my my thought the whole way through was that that man and woman who have appeared in every commercial except for the Yo! Magic commercial, that man and woman have appeared in every one of the commercials. My thought was, and I think a lot of you guys thought this too, was that that's Wanda's parents. That's Wanda's parents. Well, now we've seen Wanda's parents, and that ain't them. So uh, got that one wrong. And, and listen, I've gotten, and like everybody else, I've gotten a lot of my theories wrong. A lot of my theories have been right. A lot of them have been wrong, just like all of us. But yeah, the Vision one, I knew right from the beginning that Vision wasn't actually Vision. Um, and uh, this one kind of confirmed that. But how is he going to end up? That's the one we got to wait and see. All right. Uh, Dennis Williams writes, one of 10. Oh, sorry, one of two. Hey, John. Look at the visual effects used for the magic. It matches the stones. The blue magic was the same as the space stone. Purple, same as power. And Wanda, same as reality stone. And gold, same as mind. Uh, I think they will say long ago, different covens were imbued by different stones. And the Scarlet Witches were reality. Uh, would also explain her power up. Uh, she had reality and mind energy in her thoughts. I mean... There are several theories going around about that right now, about the various colors of the magic we see, trying to cross reference that with the colors of the Infinity Stones. Again, does everything in the MCU has to come down to the Infinity Stones? But it's not a crazy theory. Although it would be weird is about why is Wanda so modestly powered until the Mind Stone. And then the Mind Stone made her uber powerful like I, i'm not sure maybe because she's just touched by two good question i'm gonna say this for now i'm gonna say i don't think that the other infinity stones are a part of it but your observations are sound and that might be something we need to keep our eyes open for you might be onto something there david good observation next up uh, dennis williams also writes also visual effects aren't cheap so it seems they deliberately chose to mimic each stone's look well, the look is not the hardest part, but again, it's, it's a decent observation and you may be onto something. I'm sure we'll get more answers as we go into episode nine. All right. Thanks for sending that in, Dennis. Uh, X or ZX Zero writes, hey, John and Ann. Ann's not here, obviously. I loved the episode. My only question is, was Wanda a witch before she was experimented on and the stones just enhanced her power? That seems to be the implied message of the show. The show seems to imply that, yes, Wanda was already a witch from birth. That's what Agatha theorizes. But it is important for us to remember that the show never actually shows us that she was a witch before that. Like, Agatha theorizes that the way they kept the bomb from going out was a reality hex or a probability hex, she called it. And, but we never actually saw that happen. So it could be. But, yeah, I, I think... I think the implied message of the episode was Wanda was born a witch. The encounter with the stone massively enhanced her, and she is the Scarlet Witch. Now, whether that's what they do or not, not sure, but that does seem to be the implied message. Juno Faulkner writes, I can't believe they brought Vision back to life. Marvel really doesn't miss. What if the actor Bettany always wanted to work with was himself? About eight other people wrote that same. And so the actor Bettany wanted to work with was himself, but they haven't brought Vision back. That's the thing. That white monstrosity isn't vision. That may be the parts of his body reassembled into something else, but that ain't vision. And we know what is in the hex with Wanda is also not actually vision. So it's going to be interesting to see how they kind of wrap that up. Uh, Dan M. writes, uh, now that it is revealed that Wanda indeed started started it all, then how can the kids be real, especially when Vision is of her own manifestation? I think the implied message in the show, and I've always thought the kids aren't real. Agatha mentions, oh yeah, your kids, Vision, this fantasy town, like all these things are all not actually real. I mean, they might be, but my theory right now is that they're not. Ryan Lohner writes, Great little touch that they are watching the scary alien walnut episode of Dick Van Dyke show. If you haven't seen it, you're not prepared. You know what? One of the, the, one of the things that I think is great about this show is that I hope it motivates. Now, I was very lucky. I grew up with my mom and my dad having these old reruns because these shows are all before my time. But having these old rerun shows like Dick Van Dyke and uh, and other things like that. On TV. And I, I got to watch these shows as, as I was a kid. And what I'm hoping is that WandaVision may motivate a lot of people and go, you know what? We should go back and watch old that old Bewitch show. 
that Wanda clearly loved. We should go back and watch Dick Van Dyke with Mary Tyler Moore. We should go back and watch us. There's some gold in there, man. There's some absolute gold. All right, Tyler Yeats writes, um, will that... Will it be the same vision that's being brought back? What is going to happen next week? Happy birthday, man. Thank you for the happy birthday. And again, that is a billion dollar question right now. Some people think Wanda is going to merge her fake vision in with the husk vision that is white and make one vision again. Maybe I don't think so because again of what happened, what what's referenced in Spider-Man Far From Home, that vision is dead. So I think she's going to lose both visions. She's going to have to destroy that white vision and she's going to have to sacrifice her made up vision. And uh, we'll see though. We'll see. Maybe they will merge them together. All right. Next up, uh, Ryan Loner writes, where do we go? There he is. Hmm. My daughter just turned all those spells back on my friends. I know I'll do the exact same thing. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Now, what is implied? What is implied in that scene back in Salem? I don't think she turned the power back on them. She, she turned it into you're throwing your power at me. Nah, nah, nah. I'm pulling it out of you. You think you're throwing it at me, but what's really happening here is I'm pulling it out of you. I feed on yo magic. Now, then what happened is, of course, when uh, Agatha's mother floats in the air, we see the crown and everything. She is clearly the more powerful witch. So she probably thought, okay, all of them couldn't handle it. I will. I am too powerful. Blah. It turns out she wasn't. And again, Wanda just fed on her magic too. So yeah, maybe not the smartest decision at the time, Ryan. Maybe not the smartest decision at the time. Dan M writes, you think Wanda's possessed by that old witch? No, I kind of suspected for a second when we just saw the silhouette outline in the in the Mind Stone light. But now I saw this actually Wanda, probably not. Plot Twisties writes, Wow, the continuity issues and plot holes created by episode eight. If Wanda didn't use Vision's corpse to recreate, revive him, uh, then what's the decaying vibranium? Again, or sorry, go back, uh, he keeps writing. Was Hayward tracking to keep tabs on Vision in the hex? Two, regardless of a little energy from the source, how are Hayward and Sword able to disassemble, then rebuild, and eventually revive Vision when Shuri couldn't even remove the Mind Stone? Three, if Wanda didn't steal Vision's corpse, why hide the fact from Monica uh, when giving her this assignment, then claim later that she did then reveal she didn't? Jesus, my head spinning. Finally, we see that Wanda uh, did in fact create the hex. So why repeatedly mislead us by claiming she doesn't know how it all started? Listen, I'm still very, I, I, I still very probably meant much enjoy the show but my confidence that they'll be able to tie up all these loose ends in the plot is very shaken with only one episode left hopefully they stick the ending well i actually except for the vision thing i think these are all have all been pretty much answered number one decaying vibranium i think that's easily explained in the hex things that are in the hex are as real as real can be in the hex turning that car into that 1950s car in the hex that is as 50s as a car as anything can possibly be so I think when she recreated Vision, he was made of vibranium in the hex. And I think that's the message of the show. So I think that's taken care of there. Uh, and that's how Hayward was able to track him because inside the hex, he's vibranium. Outside of the hex, flakes like a pastry. But inside the hex, it's vibranium. The one problem I had, the one problem I had is the one you're kind of mentioning here, which is um, how... Now remember that they didn't just recreate vision. They that's not going to be vision. That that thing, that white thing isn't vision. That's his body, but that the person of vision is gone. That's gone. So whatever is left inside that husk, whatever software, whatever operating system, what have you, whatever AI they have running in that machine, it ain't vision. But yes, how were you able to so quickly in just a couple of weeks, an advanced piece of technology like that, reassemble it? Come on. Come on. As far as Wanda's hex magic, residual magic, listen, when it happened in the show, we all said that's going to come back later in the show. The fact that they kept that drone that had all that residual magic power still flowing through it, and they said, take that and analyze it right away. We all knew this was going to come back and play a part in the show. We knew it was going to tie into something. Now we know what it was. They decided to feed that magic, that that energy that was in that thing directly into Vision, and it kind of probably jump-started the system. How did they know that? Don't know. 
but you know we don't have to be exposed to every single answer at the same time. Uh, and again, your whole problem about they can't do it without the mindset, remember, that's only trying to save the person of vision. The person of vision is indeed gone. And then the Wanda thing, uh, the show never misled us. I think Wanda very much. Remember, we said through this whole time, plot twisties, this whole show, I have said this. Yes, she very much wants to keep this vision in the dark about what's really going on. He's the second most important person she's trying to fool. But we have said from like episode three on that the number one person Wanda is trying to fool is herself. She's the primary person she's trying to keep. It's like when you're miserable, somebody who's miserable just keeps drinking because they just want to forget. And they don't want to not be drunk, you know, or, or whatever. And that's kind of been it the whole time. So yeah, Wanda's like sometimes sitting there's like, I can't even remember how this all started. At that moment of incredible pain and grief and all that kind of stuff. And we've always said, yeah, she's saying that, but we still know she's the one who started it. She was constantly acknowledging throughout the show that, yeah, she was the one in control here. Like when she was talking to Pietro, fake Pietro, Pietro, in the uh, Halloween scene, Halloween episode, like she even turned him and said, so you don't think what I'm doing is wrong? Like she's acknowledged throughout the show that, yeah, I'm the one doing this. And sometimes I think she's lied to cover the fantasy. Sometimes I think she really just didn't remember. And then she does. But at any rate, so I don't think that's a problem. The one thing that you said that I do agree with that, and I mentioned this in the last, in part one of the WandaVision episode eight thing that I do see as a problem is the whole, how did you possibly reassemble that vision so quickly? This vibranium thing that's one of a kind in the universe how did you do that? That seemed a little quick. That seemed a little quick to me. So on that one, I completely, completely agree with you, man. All right. Next up, uh, Adrian Rosales writes, you're inching closer to that 50. I am. <laughs> I just had a birthday getting closer. Uh, shades of gray. My friend, I hope you remember that when you, you were 13 going on 30, it wasn't like you were a 40 year old verse. A lot. We got a lot of movie references in there, Adrian, a lot of movie references. Well done. Adrian also writes also enjoy your special day. Celebrate it like it's independence day, but I hope you don't suffer from the hangover tomorrow. Happy birthday. Well, thank you so much. And no dangers of me having a hangover. I actually don't drink. People, people often get surprised when I mention that, and it's understandable. I am Italian and I'm Canadian. Canadian beer, Italian's wine, I actually don't drink. It's not that I have a rule that I never drink. I just don't like the taste of alcohol. So once in a blue moon, I'll have a Smirnoff ice. Once in a blue moon, I'll have, um, what's it called? What's the wine that I like? I forget the name of it. Uh... I can't remember, but there's a, there's a brand of wine that Anne will get once in a while that I'll have a glass of that once in a while, but basically speaking, I don't drink. So just, be, but that's only because I just don't like the taste of alcohol. That's it. That's the only reason I don't drink. And I really hate the taste of beer. And then people look at me and say, are you sure you're Canadian? I'm sure I'm Canadian. All right. Next up, we got Jason E. Riaz writes, uh, is it funny because of the grievous? I loved that line. Is it funny because of the grievous injury the man just suffered? No, he's not actually injured. Ah, how can you be certain? The funniest MCU gag ever, perfectly delivered by Paul Bettany. I'm telling you what, there was so much great about that scene, Jason. Like, obviously, the line of the year, the line of the year is, what is grief if not love persevering? Oh my God, that line was so good. That's, that's the line of the year. But yes, it's funny because of the grievous injury the man suffered. <laughs> it's so well done. That whole scene was just so great, man. Uh, Preston Bell writes, John, first of all, happy birthday. Thank you so much, Preston. Uh, and wow, now there's even more tragedy to Wanda's story than I thought. So it is all Wanda. Was Monica right? Or is it another misdirect? No, I listen, I thought from the beginning, well, it's not all Wanda, right? It is mostly Wanda. Like we saw that Agatha has been kind of like that. Remember what I said right from the beginning, right? Once a lot of things happen, I said, you know, what's probably the case is this is probably mostly Wanda, but I said, there's probably another force at play. This is before the Agatha reveal. I said, there is another force at play 
That's like the old Fred Flintstone thing where there's an angel on your shoulder and a little devil on your shoulder and the little the little angel's trying to get you to do the right thing and the little de- little devil's like, oh no, why don't you do this thing instead? Like trying to get you to do bad things. And I said, I think there is another force at play here in the show that's kind of like that little devil on the shoulder trying to influence her, trying to manipulate her. But at the end of the day, it is Wanda that created this thing and is, is mostly in charge. And that's, Agatha kind of revealed herself that she was trying to push Wanda to get Wanda to reveal um, how it is she did this whole thing, right? And so uh, that's been a major, major part of it. So it is mostly been Wanda all along. Mostly. I think Agatha's clearly had a role to play, but for the most part, if you had to blame one individual, it is clearly Wanda. And no, I don't think that's a misdirect at all. The show pretty much laid it out for us in black and white, right? Uh, Jason E. Rios writes, hear me out, John. Mutants, a spawn of the Salem witch trial. Wanda and Pietro adopted as infants, soon to be reunited with her real father, Eric. Uh, What if uh, they base Eric's backstory based on Middle Eastern conflicts? He could have been uh, a general or something. True. But again, you guys know what I've said this whole time. Kevin Feige said, when Fox got bought by Marvel and bought by Disney, Kevin Feige said, when asked how soon is he going to bring in X-Men and Fantastic Four, Kevin Feige said, I have the next five years already planned out. Once that's done, we'll focus on getting Fantastic Four and X-Men in. That was three years ago. So I have not thought at all that he would be introducing X-Men. Now, I still acknowledged that, oh my God, a, a, a Magneto showing up or a Professor Charles Xavier showing up would totally destroy the internet. That would break the internet if that actually happened. Um, and so, yeah, that, that would have been crazy. But uh, no, I do not think they're, I think Kevin Feige continues to stay steadfast. Wanda is a witch. She's not a mutant. I don't think Pietro had superpowers before that. They're implying maybe Wanda being a witch already did, but We'll see. But listen, Jason, what you're saying isn't impossible. That's the thing about Kevin Feige stuff, man. It's never impossible. So maybe. Let's see where they go with that. Uh, Anthony R. M. R. writes in, Happy birthday, John. Thank you, Anthony. Appreciate that, man. Preston Bell writes, I didn't notice until now after re-watching episode 7 that Agnes was wearing purple leading up to her big reveal as Agatha Harkness. Good foreshadowing there as her magic smoke is purple. Yeah, but the thing with Agatha, this is why, listen, that wasn't the only foreshadowing. Like, I didn't think Agnes was Agatha. Listen, her name, Agnes, is a foreshadowing. Agnes. Agatha Harkness. That was a foreshadowing. The brooch, if you know the comic books, the brooch that Agnes kept wearing was a clear, uh, you know, uh, uh, wink to Agatha Harkness. The fact that she was dressed as a witch in her car in the Halloween episode. I just thought they were making it too obvious and therefore it was a misdirect. Not to mention, in other episodes, we it, they make it appear like Agnes is completely afraid of Wanda. Um, but then, you know, you look back now, when Agnes, a- a- after she killed Sparky, and the kids are asking Wanda to bring Sparky back from the dead, and Agnes looked at her like, you you can do that? That wasn't acting. Now we know that was her actually going, whoa, 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 time out, time out. Is that something you can do, Wanda? Like, because she is... Uh, she's obsessed with what this Wanda witch she had never heard of is able to do. So all that comes into play, but yes, the, the purple yet another foreshadowing, but it's that one small compared to the brooch, the witch costume, the name. I mean, they just really did lay it out for us press and they really did. Uh, Kevin Adams writes, uh, memory isn't reliable, especially with trauma. Very true. Wanda took a trip down memory lane. She wasn't ready for. I question her memory of sword and visions creation, especially if she doesn't want to face up to her actions. Um, I don't know about that. I don't know. Like if, let me put this, this is why I like what you're saying, Kevin, if this was another kind of show, if this were another kind of show where Wanda is just like sitting at a table, telling her story to, a government person and she's doing her best then yeah but when the show goes through all the trouble of showing agatha a- agatha is trying to unlock wanda's memories and making her reface them again and then the details in those things like i think wanda was as surprised as anybody when she saw the silhouette of her future self coming through 
in that flashback. So I like what you're saying, Kevin, because if it was any other kind of show, I would think there's really something to that. All right, next up, we've got Preston Bell who writes, "Um, so the whole time all Hayworth wanted to do is destroy Wanda. Was it, was it, it was never about vision. Oh, I don't know. I, I didn't, I didn't interpret that at all. I don't think he ever thought about Wanda till she showed up at the thing. And even there, when she showed up at sword headquarters, I thought he was showing her a lot of empathy and saying, look, I cannot let you leave with him, but I at least felt like I'd let you say goodbye to him, all that kind of stuff. So no, I don't think this was about destroying Wanda. I don't think, by the way, they had Vision's body for a long time when Wanda was snapped away. So I, I really do think this is about Vision. This isn't about Wanda. Uh, Anrog P writes, somehow everything always starts with Stark. One way or another in the MCU, it usually does. He also writes, Vision continues to have some of the most poignant lines throughout the MCU. What is grief if not love persevering? Also, happy birthday. I'm telling you, man, I, I talk so much last episode about that line. I have tweeted about that line. I've constantly thinking about that line. That is like the line of the year. Seriously, it's the line of the year. What is grief if not love persevering? I I will I will quote that pardon me. I will quote that line forever. I will quote that line for the rest of my life. I thought it was beautiful. All right. Isaiah uh Campbell writes. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. After the scene in episode five, when Wanda comes out of the hex, that Hayward and Wanda come off as they all already had history. Yeah, the, well, I mean, they kind of imply that with the fact that she showed up at Sword before, but yeah. They already knew each other and they had already had face-to-face conversation when Wanda was talking to him director. Like it was, this wasn't the first time they met. So well observed Isaiah. Well observed. All right. Daniel Christopher Perez writes, happy birthday, Gio. Thank you. Your kindness, thoughtfulness, and love for uh, other people is truly inspiring. Uh, this is my second super chat to tell you that you're a blessing to the world. My odd too. Seriously. Thank you. It's always so nice when somebody just wants to say it right and say something encouraging. So uh, Daniel, seriously, thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. All right, next up, we got Ben Rayner who writes, Hey, John, happy birthday. Thanks for all that you do. I buy the Dick Van Dyke cameo theory, especially after the shout out uh, of his show in this episode. I'm telling you, I want the big cameo to be Dick Van Dyke, old man Dick Van Dyke with a dancing cane coming in, dancing around and singing a song. I want that so bad, Ben. I want that so bad. Uh, Albus626 uh, writes, This was the best episode yet. I agree. I think it was the best episode yet. It both answered a lot of questions and had a satisfying emotional journey. Who gave Marvel the right to be that deep during Vision's monologue about grief? I'll tell you what, man. I I said this during the last episode. I literally swore to myself. Swore. Like, F you, Kevin Feige. I mean, how, how can you be so good? How can you make the MCU great at everything? And, like, the, the, this episode was so uh, grounded in humanity, and you just felt it. The beauty and the tragedy all at the same time, man. The beauty and the tragedy all at the same time. It was powerful and, uh, d- like, just painful. It was tragic and hopeful and just the beauty. Like when they shot to that scene in her room as her and Vision are talking, you saw the beauty of it, the absolute beauty of that very real relationship, which only highlights the tragedy of her loss. It really does. All right. Lord of the Wands writes, I wonder if Wanda actually took a piece of vision when she touched his head during the flashback scene, and that's how she was able to recreate him. Didn't look like it. Like in the flashback, it looked like it was just all power coming out of her. She didn't take a thing and transmorph it into something else. It just kind of came out of her, and she just created him from nothing. It, at least that's what it looked like in the show, Juan. It looks, look, that's what it looked like in the show. Uh, the Everything Nerd writes, What if, instead of No More Children, it's I Am the Scarlet Witch? Love the episode. Was fascinated throughout. What are your thoughts? Oh, no, I'm totally there now. You know, I, for the longest time, thought this episode, this show, would end on a variant of the House of M iconic line from Scarlet Witch, No More Mutants. She wouldn't literally say No More Mutants, but she would say a variant of it. No More Heroes. No More Children. No more Avengers. No more sword. 
Huh? No more sword. Is that white vision part of sword? I don't know. But now I'm starting to think we're going to see her in bull in full absolute uh, Scarlet Witch battle garb and, and say, I am the Scarlet Witch. And then Scarlet Witch will return in Spider-Man 3 or in Doctor Strange 2 or whatever it's going to be. So I think you're onto something. All right. Next up, we've got Dustin Flores who writes, uh, happy birthday, John. Thank you so much. When you blow out your candles, please wish for the finale is at least 80 minutes long. It won't be. Uh, feels like there's so much story left here to tell. Now, they got a lot to cover, man. There's no doubt. They do have a lot they still need to cover. And uh, we'll see how much they're... But I'm, again, I'm guessing around 45 to 50 minutes. Uh, hopefully not counting credits uh, we'll get. But I think uh, 80 minutes is... We should adjust our expectations. I mean, it would be great if it is, but I don't think they're going to go that high. All right, Crash Woodson writes... Love the interaction we got between Wanda and Vision at Avengers Base. It was like, it's my favorite, it was my favorite scene. Um, gave more time with just them two on an intimate level. And it just makes us care for them even more. Uh, and the line, what if grief, if not love, what is grief, if not love persevering? Here's the important part of that crash. To fully feel as an audience, Wanda's grief and pain they needed to take a timeout and remind us of the specialness of their bond and their relationship and their connection. They needed to do that. That scene of Wanda on the plot of land dropping to her knees with the note Vision gave her and screaming out in pain, it still would have been powerful, but it wouldn't have been as powerful if they didn't first give us that scene to show us that tenderness. That specialness, that joy, that happiness, that love. If they hadn't shown us that, then that scene with Wanda dropping to her knees, still powerful, but it would have lost an edge. We as an audience coming out of that beautiful scene, then being reminded that that is what she lost. To feel the pain of her loss, we had to be reminded of what is it she lost. Not the fake relationship in the hex, but the real relationship outside of it. And it was incredibly important, and it was incredibly potent, and it was done so well, Crash. And I so completely agree with you on that. So completely agree with you. All right, Crash also writes, when Wanda uh, enters the WandaVision pre-hex, we see Phil hanging a piano lesson poster. If only he knew the sadness he would soon feel from losing his grandma's piano. That's still one of my favorite lines of the whole show. That was my grandmother's piano. I don't know why, um, other than, I think that was the second funniest line in the show. It was my favorite funniest line until we saw Agnes at the time saying, I bit a child once. That was the funniest line of the show. But before that, it was that. That was my grandmother's piano line. I absolutely love that line. Next up, Crash also writes, Agatha name drops Wanda as the Scarlet Witch and acts like she's a myth slash legend of sorts. Agatha sees her as too dangerous. Hmm, interesting. Listen, it's not just that they introduce that there's like a mythology, if you will, behind Scarlet Witch. But the part, and that was very interesting. But the part to me that was like really heightened that was that line. It's like, you have no idea how dangerous you are. Not, you have no idea how powerful you are. Not, you have no idea how special you are. Not, you have no idea how important you are. You have no idea how dangerous you are. Which again, to me, resonates because it takes us back to the House of M comic books when Professor Xavier is talking to the Avengers and the X-Men and saying, Wanda's too powerful. We have to decide if we should just kill her. They imagine that Professor Charles, that's how dangerous Wanda is, at least in House of M. Professor Charles Xavier is putting forth the notion that we may have to kill her. And that's what I was kind of reminded of when we heard Agatha say, you have no idea how dangerous you are. I, I thought that was pretty cool. Crash also writes, the scene Wanda discovers vision in pieces was rough. Yeah, it was. She says, I can't feel, oh, I can't feel you. Also, a call back to Infinity War, and she says, I only feel you. And some Infinity War music in the background. Yeah, I, you know, I was instantly reminded of that, and somebody sent me, I can't remember who, I should go look it up. Somebody sent me uh, a, a, an image, actually. A beautiful image of those two scenes side by side. 
of the Infinity War as she's smiling and talking to him, I only feel you. And then right beside the scene from the new episode, I can't feel you. Oh, listen, they couldn't have put a more firmer explanation, Mark Crash. They couldn't have put a more firmer explanation point on them saying Vision's gone. He's dead. And she says, I can't feel you. That crush, dude, that legitimately made me emotional. It was a very special moment. Uh, Aaron Atkins writes, Hayward can track Hex, uh, Hex's vision vibranium, meaning Viz is not imagined, but was recreated, at least in the Hex. Is that Mind Stone recreated too? I don't think it's the legit. I mean, she can't recreate an Infinity Stone. I don't think. I don't think. I think that's beyond even her understanding. But vibranium, metal, walking man, sure. So yeah, I think in the Hex, he was that vibranium was as real as anything. Outside the Hex is another question. Curtis writes, uh, what is grief if not love persevering my heart? Dude, so many great moments. Such, uh, you know, you resonate so much with so many moments in these things. And that line, man, that again, I, I said it before this episode. I'll say it again. That's the line of the year. And Danny Sanchez writes, Happy birthday. Thank you, Danny. Thanks for all the John Campia show crew does to bring uh, this platform for us all to come together and geek out. Keep it coming for years to come. Well, thank you so much, Danny. Again, it's always really special when somebody wants to write in just to say something encouraging and nice. And thank you. And believe me, the honor is ours that we get to do it. Thank you for being part of our community, man. We really appreciate it. All right. Next up, Dallas Thompson writes, Curtis Lope. Um, oh, Oh, Curtis, sorry. Curtis Lopez, that, that we formatted that wrong. Curtis Lopez writes, Wanda did not steal vision from sword. That devil Hayward is a liar. By the way, happy birthday, John. Thank you so much. And yes, but it ain't nothing compared to the bad things Wanda has done. I mean, that's the thing we got to keep reminding ourselves. He lied, yeah. But as somebody else mentioned earlier in the show, how is it any different from the way Tony made Ultron? And what Wanda did is like 10 times worse. So that's something for us to keep in mind. Amin writes, in Endgame, Thor's mom says she was raised by witches. Yes, she was. So it was clear that real witches have always existed in the MCU, something I had forgotten. Well, yes and no. Remember, though, when, when she says, when Rene Russo says, I was raised by witches, that's going to be a different kind of witch than what is in 1600 Salem as to the cosmic entity of Asgard and what that may mean out there. You know, which may not equal which. What she was referring to as which, in that sense, could be very different from this. But you're right. That is a good callback, though, Admin. That's a very good callback. Curtis Lopez writes, The prologue of this episode where Agatha drains the witch's powers kind of ties back to the Yo Magic commercial. Curtis, I think you are 100% on the money with that. I 100% agree with you on that. I think that... That was that commercial's tie-in right there. That's what I think it is. All right, Bluto20 writes, I shed some tears, and I think Agatha almost did too, and oh my God, white vision. I'm telling you, remember when it cuts back to Agatha standing with Wanda, Agatha's kind of like wiping, she's standing a little bit behind Wanda. Wanda can't see her, and Agatha's like wiping a tear out of her eye. Did you guys notice that? Like, I don't know... That Agatha is like straight up pure evil. I mean, she was almost like mentoring Wanda a little bit, kind of like she does in the comic books. I'm not saying Agatha's actually a good guy. I'm not saying that, but there was something to that, Bluto. You're right. All right. And Min writes, am I the only one who feels Wanda's powers are more like the reality stone as opposed to the mind stone? Yeah. I mean, but that's always been Wanda's bag, right? Her thing has always been uh, her ability to alter reality. Uh, even with what Agatha refers to as a probability hex. So it does always kind of seem that's been tied to that. But, I mean, she did get the big boost from the Mind Stone. They haven't really defined what these powers are, so let's see where they go with it. Uh, Aaron writes, Over or under 30% that when Hayward's new vision speaks, it's going to be Ultron's voice. Also, happy birthday from the UK. Thank you, Aaron. And that's been brought up here already before. Uh, yeah. I, I, I will go... I would say under 50%, so I don't think it's going to happen. I'll take under 50. But I'll take that over 30 action. I'll say it's somewhere between 30 and 50% that that happens, so not likely, but I like the odds you're giving me. I'll take the over on fifty on 30%, and I, I would love it. I would love we heard James Spader's voice coming out of that. All right, next up. Murray Reich writes, 
episode was very emotional, totally was. You can feel Wanda's pain. It's so surreal. The classic DVDs displayed that were Wanda's inspiration gave a smile on my face. I mean, it's exactly what we were kind of expecting, right, Murray? Like, that we were going to see Wanda as a child growing up in war-torn Sokovia, watching these American sitcoms. But again, the emotional resonance of this episode was great. The joy of being with family, the joy and, and the, the tenderness of that scene at the Avengers compound between Wanda and Vision, the pain of losing those parents, the pain. I'm surprised they didn't show us a flashback of her losing Pietro, but the pain of losing Vision again, then her dropping to her knees. So resonant. Murray also writes, is Hayward shady or what? Oh, he's shady. I don't know that I don't think he's evil, but I think he's shady. Uh, he is lying about Vision's corpse stolen. Did somebody else take it and video feed of her stealing is edited in? Well, no, remember, everything in that video feed that he showed them did happen. You didn't see her picking up in the video feed that Hayward showed everybody else. You didn't see her picking up Vision's pieces and walking out. He only showed them the footage that made his narrative sound right. She did blow the doors open with her hands. She did blow out the glass and go down into the thing, but then the edit, the video edit or was cut, right? He didn't change the footage. He just very deceptively edited it. So that's something to keep in mind, Murray. All right, next up, Ismail Y writes, Hey, John. Hello. Uh, where do we go? Oh, yeah. Love this one. With only one episode remaining, it seems like there's still a lot of story to tell. How long do you think the last episode will be? My guess is around the 45 to 50 minute mark. That's my guess. And you're right. There's still a lot of ground to cover. And I keep bringing it up, but there are still three primary Wanda conflicts that need to be resolved. Her conflict with Sword, her conflict with Agatha, her, conf her upcoming conflict with Vision. And, you know, and I mean the White Vision. And I'm sure the other vision will help out too. Hence, then let's fight for our home, Wanda. I'm sure that's coming too. Plus, I think we're going to get some kind of big cameo. Doctor Strange. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. But something's coming, man. Something's coming. All right. Andrea uh, Velentova writes, Oh my God, that was awesome. It, it absolutely was. My favorite episode so far. Emotional ride from start to the end. Didn't expect that, uh, that the Infinity Stone just brought what was already hidden in Wanda, but makes sense. Uh, it's why she and Pietro survived the experiments. Also, happy birthday. Thank you so much. And yeah, I don't think Pietro, there was nothing in the show that suggested Pietro already had his powers. I think he literally got his powers from the stone. Or maybe not. Maybe he's a warlock. Maybe Pietro's a warlock. I don't think he is. I think it was only saying that Wanda was born a witch. Now, whether that's true or not, we've got a lot of things, but you're so right, Andre. It, it was... It was, this whole episode was all heart. From the highs to the unbelievable lows, culminating in Wanda screaming in pain on her, knee, on her knees, and then in black and white, the camera turning from Vision back to her, and she suddenly transformed into her 1950s sitcom self with that smile on her face, and your heart breaks. Your heart breaks. Uh, next up, Christopher Chow writes, Happy birthday, John. Thank you so much. And agreed. That was the best WandaVision episode so far. At this point, the show has been amazing so far. I don't even care about the Luke Skywalker cameo anymore. Listen, I said this on the show the other day. Somebody was asking, well, how are they still going to bring in X-Men? And how are they still going to do this? And, and, and the mutants? And how are they so And I'm like, this show doesn't need it. And, and I said, fuck the X-Men. I love X-Men. I love the X-Men. But fuck them. This show doesn't need them. Maybe a lesser show, maybe a weaker show would need the cheap pop of, ooh, there's the X-Men. Maybe some other lesser show would need that. This show doesn't need them. This doesn't need the big reveal. This doesn't need some, ooh, look, mutants are here now. This doesn't need some unnecessary big crossover. Doesn't need it. This show's amazing. And it doesn't need X-Men. And it doesn't need mutants. And it doesn't need any of that crap. And I love all that crap. Don't get me wrong. But this show doesn't need it. And, you know, there are some people scratching their heads like, I really thought X-Men were coming in. And by the way, there's still one more episode to go. You never know. But I, I think they, I hope they don't. Because this show doesn't need, this show doesn't need that cheap pop. But uh, that's just kind of my take on it, uh, Christopher. Just kind of my take on it. Anyway, thank you for the birthday well wishes, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Captain Mexico 21 writes, 
The way Disney keeps telling us to watch Age of Ultron, especially after today's end credit scene, makes me think that Ultron is back. Dude, I've been saying that for a while. I don't know if it's the same for all of you, but for me, every time an episode of WandaVision ends, Age of Ultron comes on the screen saying, hey, watch Age of Ultron next. Like, it's always the one that comes up. So does that mean we're about to get Ultron? Does that mean we're about to hear James Spader's voice as uh, as the White Vision? I don't know if it means any of that, but it is just something to keep our eyes on, man. It's something to keep our eyes on. All right, Esme Weavers writes, Happy birthday, John. Thank you, Esme. <laughs> I think that no matter if this episode disproved many of our theories, uh, it was simply extraordinary, the best so far for me. Oh, I agree. See, and here's the thing. Too many people start to base their enjoyment of shows and episodes if it turns out their theories were, were right. And if the show doesn't do what their theory was, then I don't like it. Listen, man, we're all going to have theories proven and theories disproven. I mean, who cares? Our theories are just supposed to be fun speculation. Whether they turn out to be real or not is irrelevant. You know, I didn't think Agnes was Agatha. Oh, well, she's not. Okay, great. It was it was awesome, right? That's the way it needs to be, and I'm glad, the way, I'm glad that you take that kind of point of view on it. All right. Uh, last couple of questions here, guys. Uh, Live in Spirals writes, Agatha confuses me. Does she want to take Wanda's magic? She has the power. Does she want to train her? She spent a lot of time teaching her about magic. Is she a Scarlet Witch herself? She didn't seem evil in the Sal in, in Salem. I don't know. I don't know if she didn't seem evil in Salem. When she looked up at her mom and said, I can be good. And she, mom, her mom knows her and says, no, you can't. And she didn't seem torn up at all. I mean, she had accidentally killed all of her coven sisters and killed her mother. You'd think she'd be really broken up about it and really like, oh, no, I killed my mom. She didn't seem bothered in the least. And let's not forget the final image we see of Agatha in WandaVision Episode 8 is her choking Wanda's kids. Now, maybe the kids aren't even real and maybe Agatha knows that, but still... She's kind of choking her kids. That's our last vision of them. So I, I, I agree with you. I'm a little bit confused by Agatha. Is she straight up pure evil? Is she not? I don't know. We'll find out soon enough. All right. And the last question we're going to take today, guys, comes to us from Unbeatable, who writes, what if the resurrected vision has, <laughs> has Gilbert, Gilbert Godfrey's voice? Uh, also, Wanda did that uh, crappy town a favor. Uh, looks like Pittsburgh's north side. Well, listen, again, that is something that Pietro kind of pointed out, right, in the Halloween episode. He kind of points out that, I think what you did for these people is great. They have better haircuts, better jobs, all that kind of stuff. Of course, that's just somebody who did something bad justifying it to themselves. Clearly, those people do not want to be under Wanda's power. And they're in pain, and they're hurting, and they're upset, and their lives have been hijacked. But yes, just like Pietro said, hey, they got better haircuts, better jobs, all that kind of stuff. But oh my God, yeah, we keep talking about whether it's going to be James Spader's voice, which, I mean, would be pretty cool if it is, but Gilford Godfrey. I mean, I, first of all, make an entire Iago show from Aladdin. I love Gilbert Godfrey, uh, at least his voice. I just, it's killed. That would be hilarious, man, if they did that. All right, guys, listen, that'll do it for part two of our WandaVision episode eight spoiler discussion. Thank you guys. Now, there are still more to come. There's still plenty more questions to come. We will get to that in part three of our spoiler discussion, which uh, Robert Meyer Burnett, I, I keep getting Robert to do like part either part twos or part threes because I figure you guys wouldn't mind getting a, like a, a different perspective, a different point of view on some of these questions and just instead of just hearing mine the whole time. So Robert's going to come in and do part three and that'll go up and online tomorrow. So if you still have an outstanding question you're waiting to get answered it'll be answered in that one tomorrow all right guys that will do it for me thanks a lot for being here and again thank you for all the birthday wishes my name's john campia and until next time my friends bye bye <laughs>